All right, good afternoon. Uh, my name's Ron Schwarzentruber. I'm from Lightelligence, and I'm going to be talking to you about optical CXL uh, as an interconnect for large scale uh, memory pooling. Uh, first, we're going to talk a little bit about the large language model growth, um, the memory centric shift in the data center, the need for uh, optical CXL. So, why do we need this technology? Um, and then a case study. So we wanted to prove it to ourselves, um, the benefits of this technology. So we did a case study, um, and I'm going to talk about that. So first off, uh, why disaggregation? So what we're finding in the data center is that the CPU is no longer the dominant uh, resource in the, in the data center. It's memory and access to memory, which is the challenge. Um, furthermore, there's these applications now that are defining um, the hardware that they run on. Um, so what, as a result, the data center architect uh, has a little bit more freedom to design their data center uh, the way they need to, and so disaggregation uh, was born. What we're also seeing, uh, and this chart is <laughs> getting a little bit old from this, uh, uh, from this show, but uh, with the large language model growth, right, there there's, appears to be no end to the growth of these models. Uh, and as a result, disaggregation for memory is required so that we can, um, so that we can meet the needs of the, of the AI model processing. Um, uh, furthermore, uh, it's not just the uh, access to memory, it's the latency uh, to the memory. So what you can see on, the, on this chart here is that CXL memory uh, is just a single new mahop away from your, from your main memory within you know, several hundreds of nanoseconds. Uh, so CXL becomes the you know, required uh, interconnect to access to this memory. Uh, when you're looking at something like uh, SSD or network attached memory, now your latencies are up into the single to, to multiple digits of microseconds. So this becomes prohibitive for these um, large language model uh, processing algorithms. So what's really needed then is a CXL memory interconnect uh, with optics enabled to extend the reach of your, of your memory bus. So today what's being used is, you know, RDMA is largely the remote uh, memory interconnect used in the data center. Um, the challenge with RDMA is, the, is again, the latency. Um, it's going through the NIC, there's a FEC involved, and um, it's just simply uh, prohibitive for these applications. So what's preferred is um, a memory interconnect using CXL over optics. Basically cut out one stage of the latency equation. So a little bit about CXL for those of you that aren't aware. There's 250 member companies. It's been widely adopted by all of these big names that you see here. Um, if you don't know about CXL, I'm sure you know about PCI Express. CXL basically adds memory and cache coherency functions onto the PCI interconnect, uh, enabling it to be um, a fast, effective uh, memory interconnect. So why optical CXL? Well, first off, um, the signal loss over copper uh, is extremely high. Um, copper can basically, even in a Gen 5 situation, maybe extend two to five meters, right? Um, and compared to optics, which can go that 30 meters to 50, even 100 meters, which is likely not going to be needed, but certainly in the 10 to 30 meters, uh, if needed, to um, to connect to your remote memory. Furthermore, the cross-sectional area of your copper cable is, is pretty massive. If you've ever seen a Gen 5 cable, um, 
and the TE showed theirs uh, just a few hours ago, it's, it's quite large compared to the cross-sectional area of fiber, which is, um, by comparison, much smaller. So what's needed then is a memory interconnect that can break through the rack. Uh, basically, extend the reach of your CXL memory interconnect across, across multiple racks and even through the data center. So you can, you can fully disaggregate your data center architecture. It's no longer confined to a single rack with a few meters of copper cable. Okay, so that's the premise, and let's talk about the study. So we went out to prove um, why this is advantageous and to show people the advantages of optical CXL. So what we did is we built a, um, a case study using um, large language model inference. So what you can see here is a super micro server uh, on the left-hand side equipped with an AMD a Genoa processor. That processor uh, can support CXL 1.1. Um, we made use of the Memverge memory tiering software. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit during the results section. Uh, we have an A10 GPU that's running the LLM inference, and um, that is then connected with a uh, PCI CXL card, okay, which is connected by two uh, 24 MPO uh, multi-mode fibers to a second uh, card uh, on uh, a memory expansion box that we purpose-built for the demo. Now that memory expansion box is a fairly simple box. It holds um, uh, a, a CXL over optics card along with an FPGA connected to two um, CXL memory expanders. Um, in this case, we're using the Samsung 128 gigabyte expanders, and each of those have a Gen 5 by 8 link. And so that's the topology of the demo, and what we set out to do was show that, okay, if we put our large language model right here in the SSD, versus put that large language model you know, 30 meters away, uh, connected by CXL, uh, in, the, in one of these memory expanders. And that's what we set out to test. Uh, so for the purposes of this demonstration, we chose OPT66B. Um, the reason we chose that model is it fits in a single CXL memory expander. It's 128 gig. Uh, and we, and the, the workload that we gave it was uh, news text uh, summarization. Okay, so here are some of the results. Uh, what you care about when you're summarizing a big block of news text is how fast uh, can you get that result. So what we found was with the disk uh, decode throughput of uh, close to two tokens per second uh, compared to CXL memory of the 4.8. Now, the reason for that difference is the latency required to access the SSD memory is much higher than the latency to access the CXL memory. Um, comparing that to system memory, it's roughly 70%. So it's in the same order of magnitude. Uh, what the data center architects don't want to do is put these large language models in system memory because then uh, they're completely used uh, for the workload. Um, with the Memverge software, they add a 60-40 policy, so 60% of the models stored in CXL versus 40% of it stored in system memory. And you can see the performance is almost equivalent of that of the system memory. But the, the most important number here is the 2.4x um, using the CXL memory alone. So this is the workload. As I said, news text summarization. You take a block of text and you um, summarize it. So that's what the OPT-66B model is doing for us. Um, 
this is a dramatization. It uh, takes uh, a little bit longer than this, but essentially that's the, that's the workload. Take the news text uh, and summarize it. So you can imagine your uh, six o'clock news anchor. He doesn't want to have to read the whole thing. He wants the summary. Well, here it is. Okay, some uh, additional results. What you can see from this chart is the, um, the decode throughput is, is two and a half times better using the CXL memory versus the SSD. Our GPU is now fully utilized at 95%. Um, the reason why it's not utilized with the SSD is that there's just a lot of memory movement going on. Our CPU uh, is fully utilized when it's run on SSD memory versus about 50% utilized for a CXL memory. So our CPU now can go off and do other things. Uh, and of course, our CXL memory is, is fully utilized in the, in the memory expander case. Um, so this is the progress of the model, this chart at the bottom, as it runs. Uh, what you can see here is that CXL and disk basically follow each other. That's uh, because uh, the model is being cached in the GPU memory, so the startup time is very similar. Uh, but unfortunately, as the uh, cache runs out, the uh, SSD, uh, the the in the case of the disk, it has to it has to go to the disk and fetch more data, and so. That's where the CXL memory shines because uh, it's just lower latency, faster access. So in summary, uh, we showed the CXL memory offloadings efficient and beneficial. Um, similar performance, as I said, about 70% compared to system memory. Um, most importantly, a 2.4x performance advantage in throughput in in tokens per second, and improved uh, TCO. So on to the practical aspects uh, for the, the products that you can purchase today. So there's a low profile PCI card. So um, to basically get folks started, um, you know, this is your ubiquitous form factor, plugs into any server, uh, any, any rack. Um, We've also developed a, a, a OCP 3.0 NIC uh, form factor. So um, that is available and as well um, active optical cables. Uh, with the AOCs, uh, we current, this is currently a, a custom uh, ASM type connector, but um, we're developing CDFP, QSFP, DD, uh, and others as, as customers provide those requests. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that there's a difference between the cards and the AOCs. The cards um, provide an extra CERTES uh, to do the signal integrity cleanup, uh, jitter reduction, et cetera. Basically, um, uh, you know, recover the clock and, and reproduce it. So they have approximately 20 nanoseconds uh, of latency through the card. Um, the active optical cable, though, is, is more of a linear uh, and LPO type of design. So it's, um, there's no added CERTES, and so that latency is an, under a nanosecond. And I think that's about it. If you'd like more information, um, we have a, uh, a recording of the demo at our booth uh, at C18, and you can come talk to us more about the product. Uh, does anybody want to ask a question? Okay, let's thank the speaker.